Hello everybody, welcome to Chance Dracot Media and welcome to Tower Simulator 3. Now, I've done quite a few videos on this so far, I've recorded a lot that I haven't even used to be honest, but I've had a lot of people in the comments asking about certain keybinds and how you do certain things, so I just wanted to quickly run over a few of those different bindings and methods, for example, of how you play this game, quite simply. So, one of the first things that we get asked about is the World Colour and World Traffic mods. So you get the real liveries and, of course, the real airlines and schedules and so on. You have to buy those through the Feel Their website and then install them into your folder that is Tower Simulator 3. You have to install them into there. So what you should have eventually is something that is basically under the structure of Tower Simulator 3, airplanes, and then you'll have default and I can't say it. <laughs> it's Energy's design or Energy's design, but either way, you'll have that sort of structure. I'll probably put a bit of a screenshot up of it now anyway of how it should look or maybe a mini video. I don't know however I choose to edit it and whether I could be bothered at the time. Another thing is then activating them. So you go into quick play and I mean even in career as well, you can have the databases here so you can cycle through whichever ones you have on there basically. A lot of people tend to look for them in add-ons as it used to be in the game when you get to here, but it's not in there. They don't show up in there. So if you're not getting them there, don't worry, you've not done anything wrong. But what we're going to do is we're going to jump into Rally Durham. We're going to go to about two o'clock in the afternoon because I've heard it's quite a busy time for the airport. We're going to change it to just be light cloud and we're going to go from there. And I'll show you just a couple of different things that you can do around the airport, simple key binds and so on, and maybe some different methods of doing certain calls and other voice activated things that you might not have thought about. I'm sorry if that intro and explanation was completely butchered in any way though, by the way, because I don't script these things. You know, I could spend so long writing down what I want to say, when I want to say it in these videos. I think it's always better to just say it as it is, you know, and just come out with it. Find out stuff and remember things on the spot as we go through. I know it's probably easier as a viewer and a little bit more helpful if, uh, if it is scripted, but I like to do it this way. It's, it's a bit more human, you know what I mean? And don't worry if you have quite slow loading times for this game. There's a lot of objects and a lot of different working parts that it has to get up and running before anything will work. So, we're up here in the tower then at KRDU, and the first thing you're going to be met with are these screens. So the first thing you need to look at is basically this layout. I'll put a bit of an explanation as to what each screen does, and the F keys that you use. They're the keys on your keyboard going from F1 all the way up to F12. F1 will bring you to this view that we're in now, which is the tower itself. F2 will bring you down here to the ADIRS, as I call it, A-D-I-R-S, and you can move this around by just clicking your left click on your mouse, right click moves around your camera to look in different directions, and those white lines are basically what you can see on the airfield in your field of view. You can mess about with all sorts of things on here as well. You get the icon sizes of the aircraft, tag sizes, POV sizes, which to be honest I turn off because I know where I'm looking. Line strength is the line between the aircraft and its icon, uh, its tag, sorry runway tags as well and taxiway tags obviously very self-explanatory also when you do get an aircraft on there as well and you want to move their tag around if you click on the aircraft itself with your middle mouse button the mouse wheel and then drag it in whatever direction you want that line to be in you can move it wherever you want we're going to press f3 and move on to this screen this is the radar screen you can scroll in and out on here to see how far away the aircraft are if you want to look very far away and again you can mess with icon sizes tag sizes and line strength as well which is what happens when the aircraft come up separation hasn't seemed to change much before but if you want a little bit more time between stuff coming in then you can get them to separate by 10 nautical miles we do have an aircraft that's going to be on approach pretty soon by the look of it as well just popping up from up here Pressing F4 then brings us up to this screen, which shows you which runways are available. You can change that by simply clicking this, and the, you'll see the information changes as well. It basically works the same way that it does on the menu in the game to begin with. You get the wind speed and the degrees as well. You get a lot more info when you use the live weather underneath there as well, just in case you want to give full callouts. You can tell the aircraft what the weather, uh, sorry, what the wind is. You can say wind wind is five knots at whatever i don't really know actually how to use it i don't use that myself i don't find any point in it because the aircraft don't really respond to that in this game if you do want to sort of test yourself and practice doing that professionally then fair enough pressing f5 we come down to the strips you can move the strips around however you want as well uh, you can just put them in whichever one of these windows but if you do click go or bin then it automatically puts it in the one that it should go to in theory you can also 
add notes under here as well. They're not really very long notes though, so I can't even say that I'm stupid. And that is the aircraft that we see there, which is Brickyard 3701. You can see that it is an Embraer 175. M, which designates the size of the aircraft and the gate that it'll need. 1401 is when it's going to have called up or appeared on radar essentially. And then you've got where it's gone from and where to. So it's come from KORD and it's going to come into KRDU. Pressing F6, we're going to go to the next screen. No, we're not, because I've got my keybind set for this. This is a good example, actually. We're now outside the airport in this free roam camera. If you use your right click on your mouse, you can move around and look about the airport. And it's a lovely thing to be able to do. You can zoom in and out as well and get a better look at things. And you can move around using WASD. I'm holding W right now and it is barely moving at all, as you can see. Look, look at the speed here. It does go forward wherever you go. So you can go upside down as well like this and do a complete inverted pass. The controls do invert when you go upside down, though, which I've only just figured out. If you want to move quicker, you just simply hold shift at the same time and you do move quickly. Now, I wouldn't go mad with the smoothing on your camera with this. You can change the settings in here. There. I've only got the smoothness on 0.25, sensitivity on 2 and speed on 4. Sometimes it can be too quick, too sensitive and too smooth. I tend to find that that is the best sort of middle ground for all of it. Anyway, you can do that using WASD and you can have a nice look around the airport and see what is what. There used to be a button you could press home on your keyboard and then you could sort of get rid of any height limit, but you can't do that anymore. I took a few pictures inside terminals and things as you'll see here and shots on the ground and it looked really nice, but unfortunately we can't do that anymore. And unfortunately as well, I only found out how to do that on the day of the hotfix as well. Uh, before that, I'd done it by mistake. You can also use Q and E to go up and down. So E to go up, Q to go down directly on the spot. And if you want to go back to the tower, you just press F1 and then of course go straight back to your screens. F1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now F6 normally looks at this screen down here, which is this one. But what I've done is I've pressed F6 and set it to go here. Now you can press control and one of the F keys to change where it's preset to. This doesn't apply per airfield. So if you wanted to have a camera that overlooked this GA ramp, for example, then you press control and F6. And you'll see now if we go back to the tower with F1, press F6 again, it will then put us back there. It doesn't lock in any zoom or anything. So don't worry about that or unlucky if you do want it to do that but you can always do this you can move back down here you can move the camera slightly you can have it going up this is why you need it to not be so sensitive and then i can press Control f6 again and then look all of a sudden f6 becomes that screen once again f7 i've got it again to look outside but this is also one that I've preset for another airport, you see. So it's just going to be smack bang in the middle of nowhere. I'd probably prefer it to be somewhere down here where you can oversee the terminal a little bit better and you get an idea of stuff. Maybe when it's pushing back and close to these taxiways here, you'd have it set there. So you can flick nicely between F1 and F7. But when you are in the tower and you just want to move around, you don't need to change camera. You can be sat in F1 like this and you can just press WASD and just move around and go straight back to it very very easy to do we do have an aircraft that's going to be considered as not handled in a moment if we don't get on with it brickyard 3701 runway it's oh sod it we're going to leave him <laughs> but hopefully we can do this now actually yet yeah, you can see that i'm thinking of this on the spot this is what i mean this is not scripted at all Are you ready we're going to pause the time continue he's not pausing Going around. Brickyard 3701. That should be paused. Oh, now it's paused. Right, okay. So if you, it turns out if you pause it while well, you've got the game paused, i.e. having the pause menu open, it doesn't pause. I was hoping that we were going to be able to fix that because you can give commands while they are paused. So look. Brickyard 3701, contact departure. So he's already done it, but he's not moving. So we can probably, if we go to F1... There he is. See, so he's already going around. He's already flying over the threshold anyway. And he's going to be caning it down there. And then if we put time back on one. Roger. He's just said Roger and he's off. And he's going to go and contact departure. Simple as that. 
Now, in terms of getting them to push back and behave how you want them to behave, you have to give the right call outs. So for pushback example, you'd say American 2345, pushback approved, expect runway 23 right. And that would be it. For taxiway clearance, you used to have to say taxi via. Now you don't have to, you just say via. So you would say American 2345, runway 23 right via Foxtrot and it will go that way. You need to be careful sometimes when you get taxiways like A7 or B6, B7 for example. One of the things that you just have to accept when it comes to voice recognition in games is that it's not always perfect. You have to have the English US voice pack installed as well. That's something I should probably put at the beginning of the video to be fair. Sometimes, and I remember this from Tower 3D Pro, you'd have to pronounce it very strange. So if you had Delta 2, you'd have to say Delta 2 or something like that, so it literally reads the second word. It doesn't see it as a number or the actual word itself. So there's a few little ways of saying some certain taxiway names that it will just never pick up and others that you have to say it in a very, very weird fashion. But hopefully that's cleared up a few things for you. I don't really remember getting in many questions about anything else, to be honest with you, other than like how do you move around and stuff. And it is literally just WASD. You can do it wherever you want. At whatever speed, when you hold shift, it goes much faster. You can get a nice close-up look at the aircraft as well. And it's good to have a bit of smoothing on because in my early videos of the game, you'll have seen that all of the movement was very janky and very square. Now, I've got my graphics turned down to low at the moment so they're not going to look perfect and the shadows aren't going to look great but it just means that the recording is a bit smoother anyway so hopefully that clears a bit of it up for you here on tower simulator 3 if there are any other questions so please do pop them in the comments below and i'll be happy to help out i'm a moderator in the discord as well but of course over the festive period i've not had as much time to catch up with everybody in there and speak in there so if i don't reply on there very quickly then i can only apologize but there's a lot of different channels and a lot to look at in there as well be patient with the feel there guys as well you know they're a small team there's not many of them and they've done an amazing job with this game up to now and to be honest considering the size of the team i think we should all be very happy and very congratulatory i think is that the word anyway we should congratulate them on such a great game anyway thank you very much for watching i hope this helped i really do and i will see you in the new year and i'll hopefully see you in the next episode as well